So Thales, just a just a final question in this thing. It's it's I I I genuinely when you were talking about uh, blockbuster, there was a, there's a question that I've not heard many people ask. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you. There's a lot of talk about product market fit, seeking product market fit, or what are some principles or some metrics that you have to sort of set to hit product market fit. It varies from industry to industry and service to service. But one question that I've not heard many people ask, and I want to ask you, is what is the opposite of product market fit, right? So when you take a large company like a Blockbuster, which did have product market fit at one point, it lost that product market fit that it had. So what might be certain changes in the value chain that happened that made Blockbuster lose its product market fit? And if you were a conscientious leader who was actually following the data trail, how would you sort of analyze that, hey, we are losing product market fit? How do we term this? How do we put a contingency in place? And how do we win back that loss or that, that small territory that we lost to Netflix? How would you think about that? What is the opposite of product market fit? That's a great question. I've never, I've never heard somebody express the question like that. Um, it's, ever, it's always about how do you get it? How do you get it? But your question is, you know, how do you lose it? And what do you do to avoid losing, losing it? Um, you know, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, to really be good at it as an academic, I need to, I would need to think about it. You know, I, I need to go back to the drawing board. For the <laughs> good. But, you know, for, for not having the time to do that, I'll, I'll give uh, maybe a few pointers um, about that. So first, going back to that first principle that customers disrupt markets. Uh, they, they often disrupt markets because their needs change. And one, one dimension of changing needs that uh, I've been observing working in a variety of industries, both for incumbent companies and startups across the world in Brazil and in India, Europe, uh, Asia now and in the US is Consumers have started, uh, uh, have been on a secular trend of wanting more convenience in everything they do. A need for convenience has exploded in a way that in the past it wasn't as much, right? So, uh, um, in, and partially, you know, Amazon in the U.S. was responsible for this. Amazon just gave a dramatic amount of convenience for people to buy online and receive their packages, and we as consumers, we don't have many brains for shopping for many different products. We have one brain. So the same way we make decisions about buying products online, we make decisions about buying education or which podcast do we listen to or, or where do we travel or what car do we buy? We make the same decisions. And we consumers have started getting a taste for high convenience, like buying something online and receiving it two days later. And we're applying it to many different industries, which is actually needs that we have. So now I need a need to watch TV or watch movies. And to me, it's an inconvenience to go to a movie store to rent a movie. I want to press a button and watch a movie, right? So this need for convenience started rising in many industries. And many startups realized that and started delivering food, education, transportation, like Uber, uh, uh, healthcare, you can go, you can go online and talk to your doctor as opposed to wait for a month and go to their office, right? And this has been going across many industries. So it's like dominoes that fall. And the first one was Amazon and all of the other ones. So this need for convenience was really responsible for, uh, the downfall of Blockbuster because Blockbuster was not convenient. I had to go and go to the store. And then I had to go through all of these movies and spend half an hour, an hour to choose the movie I wanted. And then I hope that the movie's there and nobody rented the movie. And then I go back and I watch it later, right? So, so when need for convenience started growing, Blockbuster executives should have realized, one, we are a very inconvenient business because if we mapped out our customer value chain. There's a lot of value eroding activities that we're forcing our customers to do. And Netflix came in and eliminated, decoupled all those activities. And point number two, 
the need for variety, right? Netflix or online, you have, you know, millions and millions of things to watch. Uh, uh, whereas in Blockbuster, you're limited by the volume of the store. And now we want a huge amount of variety for everything that, that is available to us. And that's the power of online businesses that they don't have shelf space to worry about so they can offer everything. So, you know, I'd say that as we see these dimensions of consumers becoming more interested in certain criteria, like convenience, variety, and now more recently, we're seeing consumers wanting more health, health and wellness with COVID. Now they want health and wellness in everything that they do. Uh, this is another uh, dimension that is probably going to uh, create product market fit for some startups. And as you say, break the past mar product market fit for some other businesses like banks. I don't want to go to a bank branch and deal with all of this wait for people in a bank. branch. I, I just don't want to deal with that. Right. I want something online. And so I, I'd say probably uh, focus on these core dimensions and make sure that as your customers change, uh, um, you keep looking at particularly the value eroding activities that you're offering and figure out a way to eliminate those as the startups are doing.